Hello and welcome to Google Earth for Geography Teachers. I'm Richard Treves of the School of Geography, University of Southampton, UK. These tutorial videos are designed to help UK geography teachers use Google Earth in their teaching. But if you're not a geography teacher or you're not from the UK, you're still very welcome. So how are these tutorials going to work? How are they structured? Well, to start with, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you in the screencast what I want you to do in Google Earth. I'm going to go through a number of steps and describe what I want you to do and then I'm going to show you a screen that says pause. You should pause the video and flip over to Google Earth and work through what I've just described to you, try and repeat what I've done and what will help there is if you print out the notes from the cheat sheet and have those by your side, those will give you a, an indication of the headings of what you should be doing and then once you've completed that and you're happy you flip back to the browser and carry on with the rest of the tutorial and a key little tip here if you don't know how to do it is press the control and tab key at the same time and you'll flip between the windows so for flipping between your browser and Google Earth control and tab on Windows or Command and Tab on Macs. So to start with, install Google Earth from this URL and if you already have Google Earth installed, some housekeeping, I'd like you to check this icon is present, this clock with an arrow. If it is, you've got the right version of Google Earth installed. If you haven't, then you need to update using this reference. The next thing to talk about is the layers column. Layers are baked in informational places that Google Earth provides us with and they're down in this corner and what we want to do is turn off everything, so I'm turning off layers here except for the 3D buildings, leave 3D buildings on and that speeds up Google as we fly around. Final housekeeping thing to talk about is to maximize your screen. It's best if you have Google Earth take over your whole computer screen and on Windows there's a square icon in the top right to maximize your screen. So now we're going to look at how to search. So I'm going to type Olympic Aquatic Centre London in the search box and I press return there and you see I flew into the A place mark there which marks the Aquatic Centre. You could also click the search box and we'll do it. Note the various place marks that appeared in the column here so these offer alternative places that you can uh, go to so if you double click somewhere it will fly you to the view associated with that place mark and take you there in Google Earth. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in rolling the mouse wheel in on the aquatic center and you'll see the aquatic center of the Olympic Park pops up there and then we want to get rid of all this stuff in the search column so let's first click the cross to clear it and then click the arrow here and the search bar folds up for us. So now let's return to look at the layers column some more. Okay, it's down here and I'm going to click the photos layer you see lots of photos pop up and I can select one here and get a picture pop up close that down again and also I can click on roads and you can see further detail about the roads in this area have uh, appeared so that's layers and now if I turn these off I want to talk about the panel button here. This hides all the panels, the search, the places and the layers. So let's click it now. You'll see it disappears. 
And I can click it again and it reappears. So to summarize the panels, the search at the top is where we search for places and it will come up with some alternatives that you can fly to. The places column, which we haven't really looked at, is the area in Google Earth which we can edit. So we can create things like places and they will appear in the places column, place marks and they'll appear in the places column. And we can also open Google Earth files and that's where they'll appear. The layers column at the bottom that's a series of baked in layers that Google provides for us. Uh, we can look at that, but we can't edit it. So the last thing we want to talk about is navigation. Navigation in Google Earth works pretty much as it would in Google Maps. So we click and drag and we can move the ground around. This is called panning. And if we roll the mouse wheel in, zooming in on the Aquatics Centre Park. And what I'm going to show you now is if you keep on zooming, what will happen is you will actually go on a J kind of trajectory. And you can see we actually land in Google Earth. And now if you try and zoom out, using a mouse wheel, you won't you walk around, which is kind of fun of itself. And to get out of this, we need to click this exit ground level view button. And then we're back in Google Earth normal navigation mode. So teaching tips. How do you use what you've just learned in the classroom? The thing to say with this tutorial is the fly to the roof problem. When you get students for the first time using Google Earth in a computer room, what they'll do is they'll fly to their roof and they'll look down on it in Google Earth, whatever you've planned, whatever you want them to do. So the thing to do, what I do is I just set them a silly competition at the start. I say, okay, go, everyone fly to your roof as fast as you can and it just gets it out of the system and you find they'll concentrate better on what you've got planned for them to do in Google Earth. 